Palestine. I'm pretty sure that you know a lot about Palestine, but there is many issues to talk about it when it came to Palestine, especially in these very critical days, these very important days, in these days when the whole entire world, I mean the Western world in particular, is standing against the Palestinian people. In these days, all the hypocrisy and the double standard was became completely naked before all of you, and you know that was the meaning when it came to Palestine and the double standard with other issues in the world. In Palestine today, we are facing three types of war. The first one is the military one, and you all witnesses and see on your screens every day what's going there in Gaza and Palestine with tank also and East Jerusalem. Those who stand against the Palestinian is not only the Israeli, the majority of the Western countries, on top of them for sure, the United States of America, who spare no effort to militarize Israel, to supply them with all the weapons, prohibited weapons also, to bomb the Palestinian people in Gaza. Today, we are mowering more than 16,000 Palestinian, innocent Palestinian, the majority of them is women and children. More than 2,500 is still under the rubble. Unfortunately, we are not able to reach out to them because of many circumstances, of course. On top of this is the barriers that still the Israeli occupation tanks and so that both before us. Many of our loved bodies, loved people, is decomposing in the streets. But unfortunately, since we are the Palestinian, this did not make news in the Western countries, different outlet medias. This is the first type of war. The second type of war that we are facing as a Palestinian is the political war. For sure, you are witnessed the pilgrimage session, season that all or the majority of the Western country political leaders came to Israel to show support, sympathy, sympathy, and empathy with the occupier. This gave the Israeli leaders the ability and the permission to continue the textbook genocide that is running right now in Palestine. Those are completely complex, completely shared. Their hand is fully there to our blood. Those whom came to Israel to support them, to give them the permission, the full immunity to kill the Palestinian is part of this war. Don't believe that they are democratic people. Don't believe that all the preaching about democracy, women rights, children rights, when it came to the critical point in Palestine, they proved that they are just terrorizing, but in the critical point, it means nothing since we are the Palestinian versus the Israeli occupation. The third war that we are facing is the media war. The majority, if not all of them, the Western country main media outlets did not stop the screening and repeating the Israeli propaganda since the first day ever of this war against the Palestinian people, they did not stop repeating and publishing the lies that the Israeli Prime Minister mentioned at the very beginning, which is, we, the Palestinian, our fighter was beheaded 40, 40 babies, which is completely not true, completely not true. We burned part of them. Again, it's completely by, not true. Just one week ago, one week ago, Haaretz, which is a well-known newspaper in Israel, issued a report. It was stained on, the, on their uh, website not more than one hour. Then they removed it. 
they enforce them to remove it. In this report, they prove, they themselves, internally investigation, prove that they themselves, their military airplane was, was shooted and sheltered the Palestinian and the Israeli on the same exact time, so that this caused the whole entire damage there. So that, again, but unfortunately, the Western media till today, the majority of it is still repeating the same exact lies about what happened in 7 October. In the media, or in the media war, we are still very fragile, but when some one thing, thanks to God, thanks to technology for sure, this gave us for the first time ever to spread and to deliver our message. Every Palestinian today in East Jerusalem, you for sure witness and watch a lot of tens of thousands of videos from East Jerusalem, West Bank, and for sure many thousands of it from Gaza Strip. Each of them, each one of us became a journalist. We succeeded through this to tell the Western country, the people in the Western country, and everywhere else in the world, our story. For the first time ever, but again, the classical Western media outlet did not give us any chance and will not give us any chance to tell our story. But again, today, this gave us the chance to tell our story. October 7th is not the day that the God that created the galaxy. As like, as likewise, Israel and its supporters would like us look to believe. Just October 6th, October 6th, six Palestinian was killed, slain, snape. Six Palestinian, no one of them, no one of those people making news, making news in the Western country screens at all. Since the beginning of this year, only the beginning of this year, Till October 7th, 152 Palestinian was killed, slaughtered. One of them, Hamad al-Tamimi, two and a half year old, snaped for fun. Hamad al-Tamimi, two and a half year old, snaped for fun. This does not mean anything for the Western country, media outlet, or the Israeli. And this did not mean, it did not make any news on their screens, unfortunately. So that, again, October 7th is not the starting point of the history. Our history is deep in trench. 106 years ago, November 2nd in particular, when the United Kingdom, you in Africa, for a long time suffer from the United Kingdom. It's not till today, of course, but at least they, are, they were your colonizers. United Kingdom, November 2nd, 1917, issued the notorious declaration, the ominous notorious declaration, Bill for Declaration. In this declaration, they gifted our historical homeland, Palestine. They gifted it to the foreigner, to the European Jewish. 1948, but before 1948, of course, when they became the mandatory power over Palestine in the very beginning of 1920 after the World, one, uh, World War I um, came to it. Is, and they did not spare, I mean, the United Kingdom did not spare any effort to militarize the Israeli Jewish gang, Lehi and others. And they became fully militarized. Why they used to kill us, the Palestinians, to hang us to death. Muhammad Jamjoum, Fuad Hijazi, and Ata Zir is a very important example to tell when it came how did the United Kingdom treated us when we have just one ruffle, one ruffle, one bullet. They used to hang us as a Palestinian. So that since the beginning of the United Kingdom, mandatory power, mandating power over Palestine till the establishment of the State of Israel, we became completely unmilitarized people with just, um, of course, um, with some military weapons. But comparing to the Israeli um, side, they were fully militarized. Not only fully militarized, it's the most sophisticated military gang, uh, uh, guns and machines they have so that 
we, we, we found, we found ourselves, and even before the establishment of the State of Israel, tens of massacres was conducted against the Palestinian people. On top of that, you might know only uh, the Yassin, King David Hotel, at Tantura, and other, but it, more than 52 massacres was conducted against the Palestinian people, which led to to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian people. My father was born there in Berga, in our old um, village. So that they lifted us, they ethnically cleansed us from our historical homeland and built their state in 78% of our historical land. And we became refugees in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, of course, Gaza, West Bank, and other places. I'm, I'm a refugee in West Bank. Uh, I'm a refugee in, um, from Ga uh, born in Gaza, but originally from Berga, of course. So that this is the story. After 19 years of establishing the state of Israel, they continue and occupy the remaining part of, of, the state of, of, the, of Palestine, which is the remaining part, I mean the 22% of the state of, of Palestine. We, we launched the first intifada. We did not stop resisting this brutal occupation. This is not the first time to resist it. We resisted it long time ago. Yasser Arafat, George Habash, and many others established a lot of military uh, faction and political faction that resisted the Israeli occupation. We made a lot of our loved people and loved soul, of course, till the first intifada, 1987, which some of you know about it in this intifada. We, we uprise against the Israelis, occupation again in West Bank and Gaza, or the whole entire Palestinian people uprised against the Israeli occupation. 1993, Yasser Arafat, the chairman of the um, BLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, was signed the Oslo Accord. We have a lot of issues to talk about Oslo Accord. Some it's agree, in agreement with it, some against it. But I, we, the Palestinians, for sake, sake of peace and to make sure that we will not leave our homeland, we will not be enforced again to, be, to become in the diaspora, we establish and we start the Oslo Accord. In Oslo Accord, we agreed to establish our state in only 22% of our historical land. But unfortunately, the Israeli refused, refusing, and it seems that they will continue to refuse this solution. October 7th, again, is not and will not be the first day in the history. If it, was, it will not be October 7th, it might be October 10th, 19, or after 10 years, but the resistance of the Israeli occupation is a legitimate right for for us as a Palestinian. And it come, whether it will be in October 7th or other way, it will come and it will continue to come for very simple reason. We, like you in Africa, very human being, anyone would like to put for, for a one hour only, himself in our shoes, he will know the exact meaning of oppression of being under the Israeli or the Jewish supremacy. The Jewish supremacy is fact factual, on the ground, we know that. We exercise that issue. That has been said. And since I had this very important opportunity, I appeal to all of you, before, even with the praying to Palestine, to, mom, to know more about Palestine and to help us. And when I say to help us, every one of you, again, have these tools. These tools is very important. These tools is very important again. These tools can make a difference, and already it make a, it make a difference. That have been said. I would like to thank you so much all, and wish you a very successful meeting and conference. And I wish that next year I will be here. But we will not. And also, I did not wish that to count and to come to you to count more innocent people to be died in, uh, being died in Gaza. I hope that this ceasefire is to continue. Pray to us to be it continue. Gaza is totally destroyed. We need tens of years to make sure that we will stand up again. But we will stand up for sure, by the grace of God. We will stand up. 
This was what happened more than this in 1948 to us. We completely destroyed, but we stand us again, and we will continue to stand us. We need your brain. We need your tweeting, your social media to be with us. It's very important. Again, it's very important, it's very cheap, it's very uh, available to all of you. Thank you so much. It's not easy to talk about Palestine, but again, uh, we are here. We, could t we, we, we survived the 1948 and Nakba, and Nakba. I want you all to remember and Nakba, the word and Nakba, catastrophe and Nakba. I want you all to remember it. We survived it. And this current war, or current, slaught current slaughtering, current genocide, textbook genocide against our families and our people in Gaza, we will survive it. We will stand again, for sure. We will stand more, more believe, believers of our rights, more strong, and more believers of our future and our friends. Thank you so much. Free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine. We preach Allah as our jalla to ease. We will not go down Gaza Inshallah, Allah will assist and help the cause of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Allah will free them from all oppressors. Allah will protect them from all victimizations. And Allah will keep them strong. Alhamdulillah, we say Jazakumullah Karen, Ambassador. Be rest assured that we Nigerians, we are with you. And inshallah, we are with you in prayers. You don't need to ask for our prayers. We are already praying for you. And Allah will surely accept our prayers. Jazakumullah Karen, Jazakumullah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that's a message from Palestine. And we've gotten it. Let's keep praying. And it says something. The power of social media. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing, inshallah. And Allah will make it easy. Yes, I can see our brothers and sisters wiping their tears right now. But Alhamdulillah, our tears will not go in vain, inshallah. Allah wants our prayers be eaten in love.